Okay, good day. This is Math 130, Intro to Statistics. I'm Professor McCulley. This is Lesson 19, Confidence Intervals for Population Mean, where the standard deviation is known. So let's get right to it. Today, we're going to find a point estimate for and a margin of error. We're going to construct and interpret confidence intervals for a population where uh, population mean where standard deviation is known. And then we're going to determine the minimum sample size required when estimating a population mean. So let's talk about these things. We got to do some definitions first. First, a point estimate is a single value estimate for a population parameter. The most unbiased point estimate for the population mean is the sample mean. And we've got our mu and our x bar there. Definition for an inter interval estimate is an interval or a range of values used to estimate a population parameter. And then a level of confidence C is the probability interval estimate that contains a population parameter, assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. And so when they say um, C is the probability that a uh, interval estimate contains a population parameter, uh, that probability is going to be our confidence levels, which we will get to here in a moment. So. We have some typical confidence levels that you'll see. These aren't the only ones, but they are the typical ones that you'll see the most often, where you've got a 90% confidence level, and that'll leave you an alpha with a 10% probability of error, a 95% confidence level with an alpha of 5% probability of error, and a 99% confidence level, which will have an alpha of 1% probability error. So let's talk about specifically, and this is on a normal curve. So this is a, a, a diagram of a normal curve here. And we would call this a 95% confidence arrow interval. And so essentially what this is saying is that our approximation for the mean, we are going to be 95% confident that the actual population mean lies somewhere between these upper and lower limits. And we are going to take this 5% probability of error and we're going to split it up into two tails and we'll put half of that 5%, so 2.5% on the lower end and half of that 5% error, 2.5% on the upper end. So um, while I'm waiting, while we go over this, let's pull up my calculator here. Should have done that before I got started. Apologize. Anyway, um, so the definition of confidence, uh, the confidence C is the area under the standard normal curve between critical values negative ZC and positive ZC, where the Z scores are based on how much confidence is required. So we are going to find the normal, excuse me, we're going to find the critical values if we're talking about the area in each tail. So we're going to find the critical values for the normal tip for the typical confidence levels. So in this particular instance, um, let me get my tool here, the right tool. Um, the area in each tail is going to be 5% uh, in each tail. Oh, come on, don't do this. There we go. 5% in each tail. If I take the 95% confidence, that means there's 5% left over. We divide that by 2, and we'll get 2.5% left in each tail. And in a 99% confidence interval, there'll be 1%. So it'll be 0 0.0 or 0.5% uh, of the area in each tail. Now we want to find those critical values. These and these are z values. And so, if we're using the graphing calculator here, oops, let's clear out all this noise here. Um, we use the we've been using the um, normal CDF values to find areas. This time, or areas and I should say also probabilities. This time we're given a probability and we're trying to find the Z value. So remember when you're trying to find those Z values, we're going to use that inverse normal function. So if you go to second and then you hit your VARs to bring up your distribution, the number three one is your inverse normal. So we're going to hit that three there and we got to figure out what we're going to put in. Now there's actually two ways that we could we could do this. If we go back to here 
Remember, the standard normal curve is symmetric about whatever our mean is. And so we could either figure out how much this, how much, and since it's the normal cumulative distribution function, if we want to figure out how much, if we give it this much area right here, which is 0 0.025, we can find the negative z value. Or if we wanted to, we could go, oh, I'm sorry, we're doing um, the 90% confidence level. So this one really doesn't quite match up because it would be 90%. And so we would have 5% on this side and 5% on this side. So we could go um, either to 5% of the area or we could go up to 95% of the area for this particular one. Either way, it doesn't really matter. So if I put in uh, 0. Um, yeah, 0. 0.05 and then have my standard normal curve here and I go to the left of that and hit enter and we have to go down to get the paste in there and we hit enter we have a negative value of negative 1.4 or 644 uh, we'll call it 9 let's go back to here um, negative 1.6449 now if we want to get the positive value again we don't have to do this calculation because the curve is symmetric about about the mean but if we wanted to figure it out, um, we'd have to go up to 95% of it. And so if we go second, we do our distribution, we do our inverse norm. In this case, instead of 5%, we want 95% of the left, or you could do 5% of the right if you wanted to, I suppose. And again, we'll paste that in there and you'll see we get the same value except it's positive. So we didn't have to do that calculation twice. We can just figure out the first one, and then calculate the rest. Now, if I want to do a 95% confidence level, the area in each tail is only 2.5%. So I'm going to change my inverse normal here, and we'll just go back, and instead we'll change it to uh, 0, 0.0, and then we'll insert a 2. So that's going to be half of the 5% of the error that we're going to put in the left-hand and we get 1.9600 because if I went four places, this would round up the nine, round up the nine, round up the five. And so instead of doing both of them, 1.9600, we're going to say that the positive one is 1.9600. And if we want to do uh, a 99% confidence interval, only 5% or 0.5% is in each tail. So what we're going to do is, well, again, we'll go inverse normal, and this is 2.5%. We only want 0.5%, so we'll change that 2 to a 0, and we'll get negative 2.5758. 2.5758. And that one was negative, and we'll also have a positive 2.5758. Now, you're going to want to keep these values right here around close to you because, again, they are the typical values. And when we're finding margins of error, we're going to be using these TC values. And depending on the level of confidence, we're just going to pick one of these values to plug in. All right. Some more definitions as we move forward. The definition, the difference between the point estimate and the actual parameter value is called the sampling error. And so, excuse me, given a level of confidence C, the margin of error E, sometimes called the maximum error of estimate or the error tolerance, is the greatest possible distance between the point estimate and the value of the parameter it is estimating. For the population mean mu, where um, lowercase sigma, the standard deviation is known, the margin of error is E equals this um, critical value, T, this is Z sub C. And again, it's one of these, usually one of these C values that we're going to be plugging in there, times... What we learned in the last lesson, this is our standard error. And the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of elements in the sample. So this uh, margin of error has some conditions that you have to check first. You have to make sure that the ran uh, sample is random and at least one of the following true. Either the population is normally distributed or your sample size is greater than 30. 
All right, so let's look at a, a random sample here. A random sample of the number of hours worked by 30 lifeguards in the country below is given here and says find a point estimate for U. All right, or not U, I'm sorry, for mu, the uh, um, population um, mean. And so what we're going to do to find that point estimate is just going to find x bar, which is our sample estimate. And we've already determined that the sample estimate is the most unbiased indicator of the population mean. So let's calculate that. To do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit our stat button. And then we're going to clear uh, the list out. And we need to clear out the first list. That's all we need. And then we're going to put this data in here. So I have it on a sheet of paper, so I don't have to go back and forth. And I want to be in this column here. So it's 26, and then 25, and then 32, and then 28, and then 28, and then 28 again, and then 22, and then 28, and then 25, and then 21, and then 40, and then uh, I think that's right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I think I missed one. Let's, let's check. Okay, uh, 26, 25, 32. Ah, I missed the 31. So instead of retyping all those, I'm just going to put it in there. And again, um, doesn't matter. The order clearly doesn't matter. So 31, there's my 31 that I was missing. Now, second row, 32, 22, 25. Another 22, and then a 26, and then a 24, and then a 46, and then a 20, 35, 22, 32, 28, and I'm at the end of a row, and that was 20, 24th one, so I feel a little bit more confident in that row. So 32. 36, 38, 32, 22, and then 19, 30 values. That makes me feel fairly decent. And so to find that uh, the sample mean, we're going to go um, hit stat. We're going to go over to tests. Oops. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm sorry. To calculate, we're going to do first variable stats. So we're going to hit one. Now, from a previous lesson, I have a frequency list in there, and we don't want a frequency list. In fact, I think this one will get an error because our uh, list one is longer than list two. So we, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we turn this off. So we're going to delete that. Go down to calculate. And so our mean value is going to be, so x bar is going to be 28.233 and those three is repeating so we'll leave it like that all right the next one says uh the previous use the previous data and a 95 percent confidence level to find the margin of error for the mean of number of hours worked by lifeguards assume that the standard deviation is 7.9 hours and this is a population standard deviation and so if we recall from uh, a previous slide, the, oops, I didn't want to do a sigma there. The um, capital E, the margin of error is the confidence level C times the standard error, which is the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. Now, since it's a 95% confidence er uh, level, we go back to this list and the 95% confidence level is 1.9600. So we are going to go 1.960 um, times the standard deviation, which was 7.9, 
over the sample size, which we recall is 30 lifeguards. So I'm going to put a 30 there. I do that calculation, and I have that written down because I've already done it, and I get 2.827. This is our standard error in hours for this particular case. All right. So a seat confidence interval for a population mean uh, mu is the problem is given as this interval. What we're saying is that if we've come up with this point estimate, if we subtract the margin of error and we add the margin of error to it, we will be whatever C is, whatever confidence level that we have, um, confident, that percent confident that our mean lies between those two values. And um, so what we're going to do is it says here, use the data set from the previous example to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean of number of hours worked by a lifeguard. Okay, so what we're saying is that um, this mu value is going to be between the point estimate that we found in the, in the first example, which was 28.233, and we're going to subtract from that the margin of error, which we calculated on the last slide, to be 2.827. And so if we subtract it on that side, we're going to add the margin of error to the um, sample mean, which is 2.827. And when I do those two calculations, I get, a second here, all right, if I do that calculation, I get two or 25.406, and it'll be between, and then when I add that, I get uh, 31.06, and that is my 95% confidence level. So I'm 95% confident that the actual population mean lies between 25.406 and 31.06. All right. And we can do that using a graphing calculator if we wanted to as well. Um, if we look at the stats and go over to tests, we can do the Z interval. So let's hit that. Let's try that. And so if I go, I don't have to hit second. I just have to hit stat. We want to go over to test. And if you look, we can see a Z interval there. So number seven. And so one thing we want to make sure is that for this one, we are on the stats menu here and our standard deviation we saw to be let's see here what did I say it was 7.9 so we're plugging a 7.9 in there and our sample mean it plugged it in for us and our or I had it from a previous trial and then our number of uh, number of elements in the sample is 30. Our confidence level we want to say is again 0.95. So we're going to go down here and we're going to calculate that, and we see that we get the 25.406 and the 31.06 that I had gotten in this slide right there. So we're pretty good. So to finish it off, one we'll pull it all together. Professor McCulley wants to estimate the age of all students who enroll into statistics class in Ohio in a random sample of 20 students. The mean age is found to be 30, or, um, 21.6 years. From past studies, the standard deviation is known to be 1.6 years, and the population is normally distributed. And then we're going to construct a 90% confidence interval for the population mean age. Now. I do want to call your attention to one thing here is it says the population is normally distributed. I need that to be able to do those this confidence interval because if we go back here, conditions are met, the sample is random, at least one of the following is true. The population is either normally distributed or n is, is greater than or equal to 30. In this particular instance, because I only took a sample size of 20, I need the population to be normally distributed or I can't use this. All right, so I can, what I can do here is I can go through and I can do all those calculations or I can say, all right, let's go back to this Z interval 
go second. Uh, oh, so, sorry, it's stat tests. And then it's Z interval, so seven. And in this particular instance, our mean value was um, that we found in our sample was 21.6. So we're gonna 21.6. Our standard deviation was only 1.6 years. And our sample size was 20. And this time they want us to calculate a 90% confidence interval so we'll hit zero and now we will calculate that that amount and so what we're saying is that our um oh i made a mistake gotta go back sorry about that so stat go over to calculate uh z interval i'm sure you guys have seen it i've got that backwards um my standard deviation is 1.6 and my mean value is 21 for my uh, samples 21.6 that makes a big difference i'm gonna say that seems awful crazy there and so now i'm going to calculate it that makes more sense and so what i'm going to say is that for my final answer here my mean and again we're just reading from from these two values here we are 90% confident that my mean is between 21.0115 and 22.1885 years. All right, well, that's all I got for today, folks. So our Marvel fun fact of the day, it is well known that Robert Downey Jr. makes a lot of money for his appearances in Marvel movies. And some say it's in the 30s and 50s of millions of dollars, but he was not the highest paid actor in Iron Man 1 way back in 2005 when this movie came out. This first movie came out. Uh, Terrence Howard's star was much brighter than um, Robert Downey Jr. They were actually taking a chance on him. So they kept his, he, his, uh, his star was a little bit less bright. And now um, those uh, tables, I guess, have turned. You hardly hear about Mr. Terrence Howard. That's all I got for today, folks. Have a good day. Bye.